I love our women. And one of the questions that I hear a lot as a Muslim from our women is, well, how do they treat women? And I heard women don't have any rights. In this video, I show you that in Islam, Allah has laid out all of your divine rights. You will be astonished at your own majesty and upset that you didn't know this before now. What's up everybody, this is the Jedi and I greet you with the Islamic greeting Assalamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh You know, I've spoken a lot over the years about how Islam is the perfect thing for our women and I would like to invite our women to read the fourth surah of the Quran, Surah Al-Nisa and it's all about you it's all about you Surah Al-Nisa the women and um, you know this is one of my great prayers for our people as a whole but our women because like I've always been the type of man and I, I, I pray a lot I, I think I'm just I'm just this anyway I don't think it's because I'm Muslim even what I'm about to share with you and maybe it's because of the environment in which I was raised and maybe it's just because I wasn't clouded with a bunch of stuff I mean you know I'm willing to consider any thought process on that but what I'm trying to say is like I've always been the type of man that had great respect for women damn hold up y'all um what I was gonna say before I get a daggum phone call is I've always been the type of man that it's just been in me like I just have always felt a sense of servitude to women you know and females you know um, when I was very young you know uh, and you know you play outside or something and there's little girls um, I never I can't ever remember having malice or being mean or feeling like they were beneath me or anything like that. I, I don't, I don't have none of that feeling. And then as I got older, you know, and then in my in my family, you know, there's there's nine of us, but there five of my siblings are girls. There's I have five sisters, and I just was always content to let them whatever they said that's what went that just like that's it you know I never felt anything other than that just felt right to me and in my relationships I always had perfect relationships first of all the selection process I don't just select no anybody you know but again it goes back to my makeup you know um, I was never the possessive boyfriend and controlling and jealous and I'm, I'm like my woman's happiness was always like the most important thing to me like I didn't have to work at that that's just what it's like you brush your teeth in the morning like you just yeah you know you can't you don't explain to people like a whole dossier of why you brush your teeth you go it's, I just do like it's something that you do to keep your teeth clean like that's 
why are you asking me that you know so it's, it's really is that for me like I just I just take care of my woman that's it that was always it for me I never was the leech mooch boyfriend that you know you got a few dollars <laughs> that wasn't that dude I couldn't even bring if I on the rare occasion that I was broke because I always seem to have money on the rare occasion that I was broke I just you know there'd just be you know I'd have to center my life and my activities around the fact that I was broke you know and then make that work it was never like well you know do you got a few dollars or you know and it wasn't even out of pride it was just like okay you can't do that because you don't have that you know um I'll go further you know even my my baby sister my half sister and I only make that distinction because you guys know I'm always telling I'm the baby I'm the baby I'm the baby and damn it I am the baby but my sister is the product of my the one child that my father had after my mother passed away and so she's not from the same mother anyway she's younger than me and since she was a baby her happiness was always what's important to me to this day you know and I could tell her what to do when she was younger because I'm her older brother and um, and I know better and anything I'm gonna tell her is for her benefit not because I'm trying to be a dictator and just pull rank and shit you know now I play the role of guider you know if I have a real strong objection to something I lay that out but I am just content to let her be and whatever she wants to express and do I just support that you know and I try and be as much of a provider as I can and a protector and all those things like just to hawk and dote over her you know she is a she's my sister but she is a woman she's a woman and I just always felt that sense of majesty really you know like you should be in a place of service you're the servant you know so um I, I, I didn't want to go too far off on that I just wanted to I, I needed to share that because you know I've said this so many times to about our women and stuff that I've done and I'm trying to say now that what I'm bringing you now is just and it's not everything that's why I said I want you to go to you know you can access a Quran you can go to Quran.com there's other uh, sites you can go to um, and um, and you can you know you can Google even the fourth surah of the Quran you know and um, but what I'm bringing you in this piece is just a couple of things that hit some of the uh, hot points, if you will, you know, to lay out women's rights, to lay out, uh, just to give my, especially my female viewers, my sisters, a sense of, just a sense now, do you not get in the whole class, alright, settle down. So that means you have work to do. You see, we in this society want everything just microwaved to us. Microwaved. You see? Um and we're over that. So what I'm trying to say is this is just to give you a sense of the respect that the divine has for the woman he has created um, her rights what is the man's role to her in a general sense like I say you're gonna have to do more work and I will and I'm sure I'll be touching on this topic more down the road but I just wanted to pause and bring this specifically now you know um, and the equality that the woman has you know and one of the pieces I'm bringing you 
not this piece that's on the screen now we're going to see that first and then it, the the one of the other pieces i'm bringing you i love how the brother because you know the devil the white devil that is the most against islam and its existence and all of that you know they try and make it seem like because that somehow the woman is being subjugated in islam and nothing is further from the truth but one of their other vomitous uh, positions is when you look at the breakdown, if the woman is widowed or if she's divorced or something like that, um, and the, 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 the scholar will explain it a little further and better than, than me, but just to give you an idea, like if you have a woman and a man divorce, he's going to get more of the money she's entitled to a certain amount of that money but why he gets more is because remember a lot is consistent i'm supposed to be the provider you understand and she has rights even after we are divorced that i still have to take care of her there's certain things i still have to take care of of all her stuff so I got to have the money to do that if I give it because she don't have to come off none of her money at all. So Allah is giving her a portion for her to just do nothing with if she wants. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. But I got to still struggle. You see what I'm saying? So Allah is saying, I'm going to give you a extra, little extra coin. But you know, as a Muslim man, what's your responsibility? You're not going out and buying, you know, dubs and, you know, Jordans and all that. We, we're talking about Muslim men. Understand this. You see what I'm saying? We're talking about people who fear Allah in the last day. And out of that fear of him in the last day are going to carry out what he has ordained. And so, of course, the woman is the benefit of that. The beneficiary, I should say, of that. You understand so there's a consistency you know if you have a son the son gets more than the daughter because why his little ass got to be a provider you see what i'm saying so we can't start him out broke like i say this the 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 scholar will say it a lot better than me but i want my women to leave this video and i'll be cutting in as we go through y'all know i can't get through nothing without cutting in but what i want my women to take from this is an understanding of your majesty Not as described by the Jedi or any of these scholars, but as ordained by the divine. Ordained. Like, you should put as much weight in that as you would if somebody had a will that, that you was willed a certain, like, $10 million. You would be like, but it's in the will. It's say I'm poster. So I need you to say, it's God says I'm poster. I need you to be just that worked up over this as your rights from the divine as you would be a will that was giving you 10 million dollars because this is so much more this is so much more and he also repeats uh i believe something close to what i've said to you before i said to you if i if i marry oprah today right which could happen oprah wants me but I, that's going to be in the book that's like last chapter don't 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 ask me questions we're not going to get in that we're not get, we're not getting into that right now we're not getting into it all right she wants me all right anyways if I marry Oprah today, you go, well, Oprah got all that money. Jedi ain't got to do nothing. Huh? Jedi got to do everything. You understand? Just the same as if she was broke. Because guess what? I'm not entitled to a single dime of her damn money and she don't got to give me shit. <laughs> Saith the creator of the heavens and the earth. You see what I'm saying? I need my women to understand their majesty so let's get into this first speaker now this is the i think this is the shorter one of the videos i don't know anyways just let's hear this now and this is uh imam khalid yasin and uh another scholar um and a couple things i want to say about some technical things you guys Sometime, if you watch my videos closely enough, I'll play a clip and I'm playing the actual YouTube video. A lot of times, the volume on those are, are they don't, they just not loud enough. And in the context of the software I'm using where I'm talking and playing clips, I try to have it as balanced for you as I can. That way you don't, I'm not so loud that you got to turn it down when I speak 
and turn it up when the clip plays you know I'm still perfecting that you know inshallah I will so the software that I use to capture the video from YouTube onto my computer lately the copies aren't as crisp as which this wasn't a crisp clip let us be clear about that all right let us all right settle down but I'm saying like the quality just ain't what I would love for it to be so I'm just sharing that with you you know I'm just sharing it with you hear this now this is general but there's some really uh, uh, important morsels in here that I know uh, my women who are have any curiosity about Islam or have heard anything about women in Islam and they're not really sure about some things there's some things that will come out of his talk that will be of value plus he's loud and you know uh, boisterous and we love that so hear this now hear this hey, oh, oh and so when I when I capture it from the damn it when I capture it from YouTube when I play it in my Windows media player I have an unlimited range of volume that I can put on the video to bring it up so that's what I was trying to say also all right shut up Jedi damn it nobody wants to hear from you hold up you guys you know what self I told you this yesterday you're gonna stop with the attitude towards me all okay? right I will pull your neck off the side of your damn body understand that watch your ass I'm sorry you guys had to hear that something about myself has he's just been up on his on his shoulders lately and I gotta bring him down and I to let him know who's still the king on this throne feel me all right hear this every person wait wait I invite every woman fail I invite every person I invite every woman here every non-muslim woman here to stand to the side when we leave here and talk to a Muslim lady I mean now I've said that to you my women who've listened to me forever y'all know I've said go and find go to your local mosque and find or if you know where some Muslim women are women are in your community real Muslim women not the nation of Islam folks because I can't vouch for them go and tell them I need to talk to you I've said that all right let's go on and by the way the name of this clip is don't ask CNN uh, I can't remember the rest of it let's not let's not let's not ask Barbara Walters about how Muslim women feel you know let's let's not ask Tom Brokaw how Muslim women feel Let, let's not ask CNN ABC Fox let's not ask the, the London Times or the Australian Times let's not ask non-Muslims about how Muslim women feel how they live what are their principles what are their challenges if you want to be fair ask a Muslim woman amen ask my wife Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. ask my mother you see ask a Muslim woman that knows her religion I gotta say this especially because it's him that's speaking you know this is a very strong brother like you don't need me to tell you that but you see what I'm saying and and and, and as a strong man myself strong men have no problem being little boys to their women you feel me like we know it's our job to stick our chests out and show our fangs and cut if we need to we are the defenders and the providers but you got to be able to switch that on and off when you're in the home and it's you and your woman she is the queen of the castle you understand that's it that's it you feel me she runs did you just because Allah has provided it for this I love this so much y'all I love this so much because Allah has listen I always say brothers can't get to this because you don't know women you don't know them you don't know them and any woman that doesn't want a man that does this doesn't know herself <laughs> she doesn't know her majesty Allah has provided that 
Because you see what her, her relationship is to the creator is you not going to be greater than that. You not. I don't care what you got going on. You not going to be greater than the creator. So please understand that. You know what I'm saying? And whatever little fake pat you done made for your chest for that, rip the bitch off because it means nothing now. I've blown that up. We've destroyed this. It's over. You see. But what I'm trying to say is I love being in that space. Because that's my woman is at her in bloom. <laughs> She's in full bloom. She's in full bloom. Full bloom is the term I like to use because, <clears throat> again, y'all know I'm always talking about nature because I was telling you creation is not for decoration, it's for information. And so you take a, the most beautiful rose or any flower that you like, it's got to have the right soil, the right season, the right temperature, the right climate, the right amount of humidity the right amount of water and sunlight and all, it's, everything's got to be right or that rose does not bloom by the will of a law because remember everything in creation submits so you don't have roses going well I know it ain't time but I, it's winter time I'm ready to just bloom so I'm blooming no uh, everything in creation submits to a law including the atmosphere Allahu Akbar and so when it is all right, that rose, you see the most beautiful, you go, oh my God, do you see how beautiful these roses are? They blooming now. Oh, look at my rose. They blooming. You see? So when you have a woman who is uh, out of control, and I use that term not like she needs to be controlled. I mean, just like she's in chaos in any way. She's upset. She's stressed out. She's, uh, she's going through it. You see, whatever she's got going on, any type of discomfort that's causing her distress, that means th the atmospherics are not right. And if you're a man in that woman's life, you must be aware of the atmospherics, including your own ass. Am I attributing to this? Why is my woman not in full bloom? Because when you let that woman just be and you do whatever she tell you, I could go on about this. I'll say this and I'll shut up and we'll go on. You ever see these old couples? Like the cat daddy, you know he was just like the it dude had all the females when he was young and he still got the look. <laughs> you feel me? The salt and pepper hair, but he's still cat daddy. You feel me? And then the wife, you see, and she's still done up and everything like this. But they've probably been together 40 years, 40, 45 years, 50 years even. What you notice as a pattern in all of them is he let her run everything. You just the sick em dog. You feel me? If you see something, you sick it. If she tell you sick em, you sick em. No matter what it is, sick em. Other than that, you let that woman do whatever she want and you do what she tell you to do. There's nothing that is emasculating about that, brothers. Because <laughs> that's your role. That's your strength. Can you bow to your woman? Can you kneel to your woman? Can you kneel to her? I love you, baby. You my air. No. Can you kneel to your woman in every way? In every way, can you kneel to your woman? That's what I'm trying to say. God damn it. All right, let's go on. Woman that knows her religion, who has a relationship with her creator. We'll take it back for context since I talked so long. Who is stable and... my mother you see ask a Muslim woman that knows her religion who has a relationship with her creator who is stable in her society understanding her responsibilities her relationships ask her and after that I think you should be fair that you don't need to ask someone else but the problem is, no one really wants to ask Muslim women. Amen. We want to take pictures of women in Afghanistan. Including some of my sisters. 
Because just like with everything with our people, some things you're not trying to find out because you're afraid of what you're going to learn. Hmm? But I've said to my women, you talk to some real Muslim women, and like he said, a woman who knows her religion, who is on point, you talk to her, and she tells you what's really going on, you will weep. You will weep. You will weep. Because you realize you've been missing out on an inheritance that is divinely yours, and you've not come to claim it. It's kind of like when you see people that go to Africa. Um, in fact, I usually don't have anything positive to say about the advice show, but shout out to that brother and much, much uh, props. Uh, there, I saw a video uh, of them in Ethiopia. And um, he comes to mind now because one of the things that he was stressing in that, like, you and I've said this, I brought you guys a video saying, you know, the Africa they don't show you, but obviously I haven't been to Africa. He's in, goddammit, Ethiopia. And um, did a real fantastic job on his live stream. Um, very informational, heartfelt. Uh, it was, I, I really, I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. And, um, but anyway, and one of the things he was saying was just like echoing that thing of it's so not what you thought it was type thing, you know, and how just different it is and peaceful and wonderful it is to be there. Like, you can see it on TV and you can read books and I but you there now experiencing it he even talked about how the air there's just like this like you even see no chemtrails overhead and just it's just it, you realize how ripped off you are in this fucking country he really goes into into a good talk on that and I appreciated it so much but that's what I'm saying about this like you don't know you don't know you meet them sisters, it'd be like you met a cousin that you know you was related to. It'd be like, girl, yeah, we cousins. Did you know that um, my uncle left us um, $15 million? What? Yeah, girl, we got your name up there too. What? Oh, my God. You feel me? So don't be afraid of what you're going to find out, sisters. Learn. Learn. And then claim your inheritance. And perch yourself upon your throne. Let us go on. But the problem is, no one really wants to ask Muslim women. Right. We want to take pictures of women in Afghanistan, and pictures of women in Palestine, and pictures of women in Pakistan, God damn, my and pictures of women starting over here. And we want to listen to what people say about female circumcision, as if Muslims is got women, thousands, 10, 30,000, 40,000 Muslim women all over the world is being circumcised. Some crazy. Steven Spielberg stuff. <laughs> and let me give you a statistic that you should know about. If you take a, if you take a quota in this room right here, I'll tell you this. Most every Muslim woman in this room will be a college graduate or is a college graduate or is very intelligent and very much socially endowed. And within her family structure, we find that women control the wealth more so than men. Now, what does that say to you? Hello. Because I've told you, uh, just speaking about women alone in the Muslim, uh, 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 you know, the Muslim world, so to speak, um, you know, our women have more degrees than their Christian and non-believing counterparts. Um, they have higher incomes per capita. They drive better cars. They just you could go, go down the list. Oh, they have more successful marriages. Um, they have more children. Uh, they're just it's just. You know, it's just unending, you know. Let's go back to context. And very much socially endowed. And within her family structure, we find that women control the wealth more so than men. Now, what does that say to you? So that women controls the purse strings. The man is to provide, but she in control. 
Now where you find, where you find women oppressed, women exploited, women mistreated among Muslims, that is because those Muslims themselves are not representing the principles of the religion. And in every religion you've got black sheep. Did you hear that? The religion is perfect. So if that sister is not getting what it is that she is entitled to by the divine, she th that brother is not on his uh, 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 game. And she needs to check him. And if he's not on it, then she can remove herself from the marriage. Period. You understand what I'm saying? She has a right to that. But this is also why it's important that Muslim men marry Muslim women. Because that woman keeps you in check as well. You understand? And I think one of the other scholars gets into it. Shut up, Jedi. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Uh, but I have to share y'all. I have to fill in the spaces now. Women oppressed, women exploited, women mistreated among Muslims. That is because those Muslims themselves are not representing the principles of the religion. And in every religion, you've got black sheep. But then again, you can't tell me that the 148,000 prostitutes that walk the streets in the UK or the 76,000 prostitutes that walk the streets of Holland that have licenses to do so, you can't tell me that all these little young naked little girls walking around Australia with no clothes on, you can't tell me that they represent liberation. Amen. You see, white man has you thinking that to take your clothes off is liberation you understand it's the exact opposite you understand because you're a precious jewel and there's nothing else of value in society that we don't protect and cloak you see what I'm saying? You go to the to goddamn Walmart or something. You go to some electronics. This shit is behind a glass case, bitch. Got to come up with a key, and it's a manager, and you know, and, and come on, you see. And then they got the little thing on it that that they have to take off at the register, and it, you see, because this is something of great value. They don't just put it out, and it's just laying out. Just it's just out. So why are you parading around the earth with nothing on? And it's not just what you wear. It's you wearing nothing and you acting like something less than a damn queen. Loud. Mean. Aggressive. You know. Unkempt. Some of you. This is not a queen. You went to a castle of a real life, you know, dignitary or queen or some, some bullshit. And they go, you know, the queen will be down in a moment. And she comes down and she's in like some bullshit. You'd be like, you wouldn't say nothing there. But the first thing you're going to tell everybody, she was broke down, y'all. She was like broke down. Like she didn't even look like no queen. You know what I mean? So why are you being less than a queen? I ask you now. got to go back for context y'all and prostitutes that walk the streets of Holland that have licenses to do so you can't tell me that all these little young naked little girls walking around Australia with no clothes on you can't tell me that they represent liberation hell no you can't tell me that the 2,350 abortions, murders that take place with these young women, you can't tell me that that represents sophistication. You can't tell me that that represents liberation. You can't tell me that a naked woman sitting on a chocolate bar, A naked woman selling everything, mm. toothpaste, everything. Everything you got to see a naked bitch for everything like that. I'm that don't make me buy nothing. 
Like, there's no relationship to that. You feel me? Like, I... T what does that do? Quick, I saw a titty. Let me go and buy that burger. Because when you get there, it's going to be some little teenage bitch with zits all over her damn face. You understand what I'm saying? Fantasy over, homie. And now you out of whatever the damn burger costs. For what? It meant nothing. But this is the one that sends me right into surgery. And after you worked on by a team of doctors and specialists. When I hear this. And even saying it, I may have to, I may go into, I may over, hyperventilate. If you have it, you should flaunt it. That's it. I, I'll play it. I'm, I'm not going to be back. I'm going to the hospital. You can't tell me that doesn't represent exploitation. So let's put things in context. Let's talk about things correctly. And let's be fair. And let's be objective. We can talk about that a little bit more if you want to. And let me give you one more statistic. One more. Prostitution, venereal disease, abortion, and pedophilia. Hear this. Hear this. And this horrendous number of children being raped and kidnapped. Hear this. That exists in the Western world. It is almost unheard of in the Muslim world. In the Muslim world. I told y'all, just like even with the hashtag Me Too bullshit, we don't we don't have that. We don't have that. We don't have that. <sighs> so I think that the statistics kind of like speak for themselves. And that's the end of the clip. All right, let, let's move to our next uh, scholar on this topic. Now, this is a talk by um, the scholar Zakir Nai that I have introduced you to in a recent uh, piece. <clears throat> and this talk is, and it might have been in, in regards to a question, I'm not sure, because when he lectures, it's always a sea of people. And this one is women's rights in Islam, liberated or subjugated. All right. And I'm definitely going to be with you through this again because of his accent. And then, of course, I have to uh, clarify points and things like that and expound on it. So let's get into this now and um, be inspired, my women. There's not a mother in this world who wouldn't give up her life for the life of her child. Women's rights in Islam. Protected or subjugated? Child. And I think they said a uh, different in the main in the main title of the video. There's not a mother in this game. world who would have been happy to have a home for her family. Dr. Zahir Nai. And furthermore, irrespective, the woman may be very rich, the wife may be very rich, or she may be poor. Irrespective whether the husband is rich or poor, it is yet the duty of the husband to look after the food, clothing, lodging and on financial aspects of the wife. And all financial aspects of the wife. You hear that? He opened up with that. Even if she's rich. Again, because I told y'all, Oprah, and I wasn't even going to say this. So I'm saying, y'all making me tell stuff. I I'll just say this. The way she looked at me, because I was with some of the camera people at Riri's funeral and stuff, and it just even before that was another little soiree out in um I forget where it was I think it was in New York I think it was New York, and just the way she looked, you see what I'm saying? And we just I, I, I anyway she know she know, all right. But anyway, you see what he's saying? Like it doesn't matter if she's rich or even if you rich or poor, you still have to take care of everything and all the financial needs of the woman. Or she may be poor. She wants, goddammit, Hermes and Versace. Get your ass out there and get it. Irrespective whether the husband is rich or poor, it is yet the duty of the husband to look after the food, clothing, lodging, and on financial aspects of the wife. He cannot say, okay, my wife is rich, I'm poor. 
ये डेट इज ड्यूटी फर्दर मूव जस्ट इन केस इफ डिवोर्स टेक्स प्लेस और इफ a woman gets widowed he said if divorce takes place or if the woman gets widowed you see how his accent gets in the way there for us but your boy is on the case furthermore he said just in case if divorce takes place if divorce takes or place or if a woman gets widowed or if a woman gets widowed <clears throat> she gets maintenance for the idda period she gets maintenance for the uh what's the word he used widowed She gets maintenance for the idda period. What word is he saying? Ah, <sighs> the blood of Jesus as the Christians say. Widowed. She gets maintenance for the idda period. I'm not going to get it. She gets maintenance for the That's important though, Jedi, you got to get it. That word is our link. She gets maintenance for the idda period for the waiting period for the waiting period. I'm glad to clarify it after that. <laughs> so even if she gets divorced, she's you still taking care of her. All her everything. So I'm saying everything. And if she's pregnant, it extends till she gives delivery of the child. And if she's pregnant, it extends to the delivery of the child. You still till she gives birth of the child and if the child is born she even gets financial support till the child grows up hear that you see what i'm saying this was before any courts and any child support and family court and judge judy's fake ass is she here is she here is she here is she here okay All right, yeah judge judy fake ass <laughs> you see allah had already provided for the woman in the sixth century nearly 1500 years ago everybody all this women's lib and burning they bra and god bless them but allah had already taken care of his queens she even gets financial support till the child grows up furthermore in islam a woman even inherits in many religions the woman is not allowed to inherit She does not have any share in Islam. She is entitled to inheritance in the property left behind by her family members. But in Islam, the woman inherits. There are on many occasions a sea of people. We are non-Muslims. The object and they say, "Fine, in Islam, women do inherit, but why do they inherit half?" He's giving an example. He's saying some who are non-Muslims say, "Oh, fine, the woman can inherit in Islam, but why does she only inherit half?" Trying to say that Islam subjugates the woman. You heard that? They try to throw shade. But if you analyze the logic behind it, you'll understand the wisdom of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, of our Creator. Now. I'm going to I'm going to uh fast forward the meaning of this. I'm still going to let you hear it all, but I'm going to give you what you're hearing just at the beginning. Everything he's going to be saying, he's going to break down how stuff breaks down as far as inheritance and who gets what and all that kind of stuff and da 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 da. da. And so but what it ends up in is something I think I mentioned already because at the at the end of the day, it's consistency with your maker. the man must provide so he's got to have in order to be able to give let's go almighty god as i mentioned a few minutes earlier in islam it is the man who bears the financial burden before woman is married it is the father and the brother to that before the woman is even married it's her father and her brothers that is supposed to provide for her again from the time a little girl comes to earth she is supposed to be taken care of and pampered as a queen she is a female she is a woman damn you understand so your brother works at McDonald's she gets a check get damn it so i'm saying daddy's going out to work she gets a check 
After she's married, it is the husband and the son. When she get married, the husband and her sons are supposed to take care of her. Who looks after her lodging, boarding, clothing, and all financial aspects. Her lodging, clothing, boarding, and all financial aspects. She wants goddamn Christian Louboutin. Get out there and get it. Get your ass. Let's hear that again. It is the father and the brother. After she's married, it is the husband and the son who looks after her lodging, boarding, clothing, and all financial aspects. And if you're in a Muslim country, and you can do it in a non-Muslim country, but certainly if you're in a Muslim country, and or a Muslim community or anything like that, and you have a woman who is widowed or alone or her husband died or something like this, then it is respond and if she doesn't have sons who are old enough to do you know to be of any uh, real assistance financially and stuff like that, the men in that community will take care of her, even if they're married. We'll buy your car, we'll buy your house, we pay your rent, we buy your groceries, we do it all. We buy your clothes, we do everything for you simply because you are a woman, period, at the end. Now, if there, if, if she, being a Muslim woman, she also has the option, if she wants to, to marry into another family. Not for sexual gratification or anything like that, but so that she maintains her rights. Her rights, everybody. Her rights. When the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam married Aisha, it was for that reason. They and white devils say, "Oh, he's a pedophile. She was underage, and he he's a pedophile. And he's a, he's a pedophile, and he, he sit, sit your fat ass down. Sit your fat bacon eating ass down and learn." Fact of the matter is, it was the same principle. He married Aisha so that she would maintain her rights, her divinely given rights as a woman, period. The beauty, everybody, the beauty, the beauty, the beauty, the beauty, the beauty of this way of life. If you read the Quran, the inheritance is given in several places. In Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 180. In Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 240. In Surah Nisa, chapter number 4. Surah Nisa, that's the one I was citing for you earlier. That's the women, chapter 4 of the Quran. Verse number 79. In Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 19. In Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 33. In Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 106, 208. In several places. But the right, because I always tell anyone, they go, do you have a directive? Like, you're at the hospital or something like that. Yeah, I was like, I'm like, yeah, my will is in the fifth surah of the Quran. Read it. That's how all my shit is supposed to be divided up and everything's supposed to happen and it's all lined up of who gets what based on your family structure. Like you're not ever going to find Muslims fighting over damn estates and money after somebody has died. Because why? Allah has already told you how all your shit is supposed to be divided up and who gets what and how much based on what they place is in the family and their relation and all that. And you don't need to worry about nothing. Allah has taken care of everything in his infinite Wisdom. <sighs> I'm gonna need a drink of punch, y'all. In Surah Baqarah, chapter number two, verse number two hundred and forty. In Surah Nisa, chapter number four, verse number seven nine. In Surah Nisa, chapter number four, verse number nineteen. In Surah Nisa, chapter number four, verse number thirty-three. In Surah Maida, chapter number five, verse number hundred and six hundred and eight. In several places, but the most specific share division is given in Surah Nisa, chapter number four, verse number eleven and twelve, where it says. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained. That in what you leave your wealth for your children, the sons get double the share of the daughters. If only daughters, two or more, they share into third. If only one, she gets half. The verse continues. In what you leave for your parents, each get one sixth if you have children. The mother gets one third. If there are no children, and the verse continues, in what your wives leave for you, you get half if there are no children, you get one fourth if there are children. What you leave for your wives, they get one fourth if there are no children, they get one eighth if you have children. Don't confuse yourself, go back 
Home, open the Quran, Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse... <laughs> you see, so if you didn't get all that, he's telling you, go to Surah Nisa, the fourth chapter, and you start reading. Understand that. But again, everybody, this is what your attorney or anybody, whoever's telling you affairs, this is what they would have in front of them, the Quran. This is how your stuff is supposed to be divided up, and Allah's giving you all of the scenarios. If you die, this is what happened. If there's kids, if there's not kids. If your wife died, this is what you get. If if you got kids, or if you ain't got kids, your parents get this, and they did this, and if there's kids, then they get this. You see what I'm saying? It's all there. It's all there. It's all there. It's all there. If you have children, don't confuse yourself. Go back. Home, open the Quran, Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse number 11 and 12. Easy. I do agree that most of the times the women inherit half the amount what the men inherit. But there are occasions when they inherit equal. For example, one sixth both for the parents, for mother and father, if they have children. But if they don't have children, mother gets one third. That means double than that of the father. See? But I do agree with they you. They don't have children. Then the mother gets one third, double the amount of the father. Hear that again. For mother and father, if they have children. But if they don't have children, mother gets one third. That means double the amount of the father. But I do agree with you, as a whole, most of the times, the woman inherit half. Son gets double than that of the daughter. Husband gets double than that. Son gets double that of the daughter. Husband gets double that of of the wife of the wife of the what is the logic behind it the now this is the punchline says what's the logic behind it logic is as i mentioned since man is the person who takes the financial burden and suppose there's a person who dies and after giving the shares of the other people if hundred and fifty thousand dollars or hundred and fifty thousand rupees is balanced for the children after giving the shares of the other relatives, if hundred and fifty thousand dollars, hundred and fifty thousand rupees is balanced, and that man has got one daughter and one son, the son will get hundred thousand dollars or hundred thousand rupees, and the daughter will get fifty thousand dollars or fifty thousand rupees. People will say injustice. Why did the daughter get half? But the logic behind it is, the man has the financial burden. I am asking a question, would you want to inherit $100,000 or 100,000 rupees and spend 80 or 90% of that what have inherited on the family if you are a man or would you prefer inheriting $50,000 or 50,000 rupees and not spending a single penny or single paisa on the family? If you are a man and if you inherit $100,000 100,000 rupees, maybe 80 or 90% goes on the family. What is left with you? 10,000, 20,000 rupees or dollars. If you're a woman, you get 50,000 dollars or 50,000 rupees, 100 percent you keep for yourself. So would you? See, 100 percent, the woman keeps for herself. She don't get to do nothing with her money. So I'm saying, but look at it. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Man. Dollars. If you're a woman, you get 50,000 dollars or 50,000 rupees, 100 percent you keep for yourself. So would you prefer inheriting 100,000 and keeping only 10, 20,000 with you or would you prefer inheriting 50,000 and keeping everything with you? See, it's none of that, well y'all divide up the money but then you still gotta help with the kids though cause you still post it. No. She sits perched. She don't gotta do a damn thing. Period. And she's backed up by the divine the creator of everything if Allah would have given equal amount to both then I would have to give a talk on men's rights in Islam when Allah has given the right he is even equal if he has put the financial burden on the men he sees to it that the men get double otherwise it will be injustice and the Quran says in Surah Nisa chapter number 4 verse number 40 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is never unjust in the least degree so if you know the hikmah behind it 
if you realize that, yeah. that the guidance given by the our wisdom. creator is the best just because the women in islam are financially more secured than the men what would you say the women in islam are they protected or are they subjugated the blood of jesus it's the prince let's discuss the social yet. rights of the women in islam wait child let me tell him he's dead to me You are dead to me. And you look tired. I'm right in the middle of production. Like, I'm literally recording. Oh, wow. I have to call you back. And maybe we won't get it in because it's already really late there right now. Um, first one is Friday. Oh, it is Friday. All right. I don't need to know what day it is. I don't need to. I don't need to. All right. So, I will call you back, inshallah. All right, salam alaikum. Ah, oh, blood of Jesus. Now, we're moving into social rights here. Let's discuss social rights of the women in Islam. I have broadly divided the social rights of women in Islam into four subcategories. The rights of the daughter in Islam, the rights of the wife in Islam, the rights of the mother in Islam, and the rights of the sister in Islam. See, First we'll he's covered by the sister, the wife, the mother, and the daughter. All right, he's breaking it into four parts. Islam, the rights of the mother in Islam, and the rights of the sister in Islam. First, we'll discuss the rights of the daughter in Islam. The Quran prohibits the killing of any female child or female infant. The Quran says in Surah Taqweer, chapter number 81, verse number 8 or 9, that when the female child is buried alive, and when she's asked, for what crime was she killed? Quran prohibits the killing of female children and female infants. The Quran does not only prohibit the killing of female infants, it prohibits the killing of all infants, all children, whether male or female. Quran says in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 151, that kill not your children for want of sustenance. For it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will give sustenance to you and your children. Kill not your children for want of sustenance. So right there Allah has told you no need for abortion. But you have to take it all in context because everything else Allah has laid out for you, you're not supposed to become pregnant and you ain't married. <clears throat> that cannot happen. You see? But the overall idea, the point he's making there, taking in, in context what I just said to you, He's saying, you know, if you're like, well, I won't be able to take care of the child, so I got to put him up for abortion. So this would also infer abortion or adoption as well. You see, kill not your children for fear of lack of sustenance. Allah has said he will provide. He will for the mother and the child, and you must trust him. You must hear that again. Kill not your children for want of sustenance. <clears throat> for it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will give sustenance to you and your children. Allah repeats the message in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 31. Kill not your children for want of sustenance. For it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will give sustenance to your children and you. For killing of children is a major sin. There was a program that came on BBC the name of the program Assignment and the title was Let Her Die there was a British reporter by the name of Emily Beckenin who comes from UK and does a survey of India and she says that every day more than 3000 fetuses are being aborted in India 
after they identified that day are females. That's an India. If you multiply this figure by 365, the number of days in a year, you get a total of more than a million fetuses are being aborted in India alone after they identified that they are females. After it's identified they're females. And according to the Tamil Nadu government hospital report, it says out of 10 female children born alive, in the Tamil Nadu government hospital, four are put to death. Four are aborted. And there are big billboards and hoardings in states such as Rajasthan and Tamil Nadu saying, spend 500 rupees and save 500,000 rupees. Indicating, spend 500 rupees and do the ultrasonography. Identify that the child you're carrying is a female and abort her and save the couple of lakhs in upbringing her uh, and the balance two lakhs in dowry and save your money spend 500 rupees and save 500,000 rupees very good bargain because of this evil practice of female infanticide and female feticide you find the sex ratio in India it is imbalance according to the census of 1901 1901 for every thousand males in India, there were 972 females in 1901 census. As science and technology is advancing, you can identify easily whether the child is a male or a female. So as science and technology is advancing, the women are being subjugated. According to the census of 1981, in India, for every thousand males, there were 934 females. According to the census of 1991, for every thousand males, there were 927 females. You know, science technology advancing, women are being subjugated. As I told you, the western talk of women's liberalization is nothing but a disguised form of exploitation of body deprivation of honor and the western of idea of women uh, liberation women are being subjugated as I told you the western talk of women's liberation the western talk of women's say it again basically America's the west America and the west their idea of women's liberation is some bullshit there I translated as I told you the Western talk of women's liberalization is nothing but a disguised form of exploitation of body. It's nothing but a form of exploitation of the body. Deprivation of honor and degradation of the soul. Degradation of the honor and the soul. If this evil practice of female infanticide and female feticide stops, even in India, in the next few decades, the male and the female ratio, inshallah, would become equal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator almighty God, does not only prohibit the killing of female children, it even rebukes the thought of a person becoming sad at the news of a female child. Allah has even forbid the idea of you, the thought of you becoming sad if you learn that you're having a girl. That is forbidden. You see, I've said to my sisters, Allah is not playing about you. Period. Sure, inshallah would become equal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our great almighty God, does not only prohibit the killing of female children, it even rebukes the thought of a person becoming sad at the news of a female child. Quran says in Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 15 and 59, that when news is brought to one of them, of the birth of a female child, his face darkens and he's filled with inward grief and he starts thinking that should he let her live in contempt or should he bury her alive? Ah, what an evil thought! The Quran rebukes the thought of a person becoming sad at the news of a birth of a female child. Leave aside killing, even becoming sad at the news of a birth of a female child. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like it. He rebukes it. Rebuke. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, It's mentioned in Sahih Hadith, volume number 4. The beloved Prophet said that anyone who upbrings 
two daughters. This is the prophet now. Anyone who brings up two daughters with love and affection till they grow up, they'll be as close to me as these two fingers on the day of judgment. Who brings up two girls um, in prosperity or blah, 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 blah. anyone who upbrings two daughters with love and affection love and affection till they grow up till they grow they'll up be as close to me Allah says they will, uh, uh, the Prophet is saying Allah says they will be as close to me as these two fingers as these two fingers on the day of judgment on the day of judgment and he kept both his two fingers together there's another side hadith in which the Prophet said that anyone who brings two daughters with love and affection till they grow they shall enter Jannah Allahu Akbar and you know who I thought about Barack and Michelle homie Barack and Michelle Barack and Michelle I gotta I gotta go and worship all right couple more minutes our beloved Prophet Muhammad he did not only talk about equality he actually practiced it once there was a man who kissed his son and placed him on one of his laps but did not do the same for his daughter the prophet objected and said that the man was unjust he should have even kissed his daughter and placed her on the other lap now we'll discuss the rights of the wife in islam now the rights of the wife in islam i'm gonna go pray it'll be a uh well probably won't be a transition for you guys because whatever anyways it'll just be a quick little thing for you it'll be about 10 minutes for me but you won't feel it and jedi out okay now let us get into the rights of the wife in islam most of the other religions besides islam they consider the woman as an instrument of the devil but the quran refers to the woman as a muhsana muhsana in arabic means he said in other cultures a woman is considered the wife is considered like an instrument of the devil <laughs> stuck for law oh my god i can't even but in islam she is known as a muhsana which means a fortress against the devil allahu akbar means a fortress against the devil because a pious woman who's on the straight path she prevents the husband from deviating and going on the wrong track and keeps him on the sirat al-mustaqim the sirat therefore al she's called right as muhsana a fortress against the devil again goes back to what i said that's why you you need a, a righteous woman you feel me keep you on the straight and narrow check you so i'm saying keep you in line when you start to swerve the quran in surah nisa chapter number four verse number 21 refers to marriage to nikah as a sacred covenant it's a sacred covenant a sacred contract between the husband and wife the quran says in surah room chapter number 30 verse number 21 that we have created for you mates from amongst yourselves so that you may live with them in tranquility and he has put love and mercy between your hearts Allahu Akbar. the beloved prophet Muhammad, he said it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari volume number seven in the book of Nikah chapter number three hadith number 5066 the beloved prophet said oh young people Whoever has the means to get married should get married. Okay. In Islam, marriage is highly, highly, uh, 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 you know, um, I, I, I hate to use the word promoted because that does not sound, but anyways, it's highly encouraged. You understand? It's, it is ordained. <clears throat> You know, if you're able to, you know, as you know, if you have the, because remember, you got to be a provider. You don't just shack up. We don't do that. You see, you must be in a position 
to be able to provide everything a hundred percent for that woman your whole engagement with her you're not even asking her about her finances because you don't care it's about what you got to do so it we it's marriage 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 the beloved prophet also said <clears throat> there is no monasticism in islam monasticism everybody is um people who it's kind of like um priests so it's, uh, it's interesting that the word there is monas monastic because it's one of the root is one of the roots there because you have the monastery you know priests are in the monastery and what they take a vow of celibacy they give up the world they don't have anything to do with humanity basically and there's none of that in islam where you just like um I'm just going to be a monk now and crawl into a cave and I'm only practicing Islam and nobody come near me. That There's none of that in Islam. It's none of that. You see? And so as it relates to marriage, you're not supposed to, um, you know, you're, you and your wife and then you can't do that to your wife either. The beloved prophet also said, there is no monasticism in Islam. And the Prophet said, anyone who marries, he completes half his deen. Deen is our way of life. Deen. All right. And so, uh, and your deen is your walk through life from birth to death. And so, based on what Allah has ordained for you, your way of life everything about it he's saying that half of your responsibility to your dean is to be married you see again if you're able to and if you have the means and all that and da 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 one during question answer time there was a person who asked me that does it mean that if i marry twice will i complete my full dean funny but no damn it no what did the Prophet mean when he said that marriage completes half your deen? Marriage prevents you from promiscuity, from fornication, from homosexuality. You see, marriage keeps you from promiscuity, fornication, homosexuality. You see, again, Allah is perfect. Perfect. He said, get, get your over there and get married. Get, take it, get, get. You see, again, Allah has put everything in place for, for your existence, for you to be a successful human being and be able to submit in this lifetime, everybody. It's all there. <laughs> My God. That's why you always hear me tell you, Islam is not a religion. We use that word for you. Islam is your entire instruction from the divine on everything from birth to death let us go on only if you marry do you have an opportunity to be a husband or a wife only if you marry do you have an opportunity he's saying opportunity but he's saying a push I can't even say it like he says it but he's saying opportunity everybody take it back just as coach prophet mean when he said that marriage completes half your deen marriage prevents you from promiscuity, from fornication, from homosexuality. Only if you marry, do you have an opportunity to be a husband or a wife. Only if you marry, do you have an opportunity to be a... Opportunity. <laughs> I'm only using that from now on. <laughs> you need to have an opportunity. So I'm saying, you don't even have an opportunity in this country. You don't even have an opportunity. So I'm saying, I have, a, I have all kinds of opportunities. So I'm saying, I've had opportunities in my life. Feel me? I have opportunities. So I'm saying, so I'm saying, so I'm saying. An opportunity to be a husband or a wife. Only if you marry, do you have an opportunity to be a father or mother, which are very important duties in Islam. So irrespective, whether you marry once or twice, you only complete half your deen. In Islam, for a marriage to solemnize, taking the permission of both would be husband and wife. The man and the woman is equally important. The Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 19, do not inherit the woman against their wishes. 
the hadith with the mention of Sahih Bukhari, volume number seven, book of Nikah. Hear this now. Do not inherit the woman against her will. This is very important for sisters to know. Volume number seven, book of Nikah. Do not inherit the woman against the wishes. The hadith with the mention of Sahih Bukhari, volume number seven. That also would cover rape and sexual assault. You see what I'm saying? Again, we don't got no hashtags. Book of Nikah, chapter number 43, hadith number 5138. A lady by the name of Khansa bin Zakhadim al Ansariya, she approached the Prophet and said that my father has married me to a person against my wishes. The Prophet. You see that I have to point this out, y'all. We had to learn and share. So even he's telling this now, this hadith about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But we know the name of the woman who came up and asked him the question. Do you understand? I couldn't let that detail get past you. It, a lady by the name of Khansa bin Zakhadim al Ansariya, she approached the Prophet and said that my father has married me to a person against my wishes. The Prophet he nullified the marriage. The Prophet nullified the marriage. Done. The end of Sahih Hadith, which mentioned Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Hadith number 2469. Okay, remember, Hadith is the what the Prophet said and did. When a lady approaches the Prophet and says that my parents have forced me to marry a man against my wishes. Now, the first one was married somebody I don't like. Now, my parents forced me to marry somebody against my wishes. I don't even want him. And the Prophet said she has the option of either continuing the marriage or nullifying the marriage. She has the option of continuing or nullifying it. Allah is not playing about the woman, everybody. Allah is not playing about the woman and to my sisters y'all need to stop playing about yourself understand your majesty put on your robe and get on your damn throne I'm over it the, the similar hadith mentioned Ibn Majah hadith number 1875 is the same hadith a woman approaches the prophet and tells her that my parents have forced me to marry against my wishes and the prophet now there's another one another example Prophet says you can either continue the marriage or you can nullify the marriage and the woman says I continued the marriage but I wanted the woman to know that the parents cannot force their daughters parents cannot force daughters to marry someone they don't like one of my ba Bangladeshi Muslim brothers got married uh, the earlier this year back at Ramadan it was around Ramadan uh, he went back to Bangladesh because his parents had found him a wife and he went back and so but it's all good like she likes him and who wouldn't like Wahid he's a beautiful brother inside and out he's a, just a, oh my god what a light he is I cried when I found out he had gotten married I cried for him I was so happy man Allahu Akbar but anyways because you know in some cultures there is arranged marriage and you know so that goes on <clears throat> but in those cultures Islam it's the word of Allah <clears throat> that overrides that for Muslims so it might be your culture but this is what we doing you see to marry someone who they don't like because remember we don't change the, re the the way of life to fit us we submit to the way of life Allah has ordained for us that is one of the fundamental differences between Christian one of the many fundamental difference between Christians and Muslims that's why there's so many denominations of it because nobody's submitting that's why they got 354 versions of their damn Bible because nobody's submitting you see and you got people that it, like the half of it that I had to put the um the um, drag video out on you know like one of the things that they said in their comment was that you know and and you know I don't need to learn no Arabic just to read a book and this okay so that means you if the Bible wasn't in this English bullshit you wouldn't be interested you wouldn't submit to learn it you see we must learn the divine language because that's what a lot revealed it in 
you must learn it we do what it says that's why we are one across this earth I can go fly into any city on planet earth right now and find the Muslims and our habits will be the same irrespective of language and culture you understand it's this way of life their daughter <clears throat> to marry someone who they don't like the Quran says in Surah Baqarah chapter number 2 verse number 228 that the women have rights similar to those against them on terms equitable but the men have a degree of advantage based on women have rights of the same degree of those against them and men have a degree of advantage but he's going to break that down on terms equitable on terms but the men have a degree of advantage but men have a degree of, of advantage <clears throat> based on this verse of the Quran men and women are equal except in leadership the men and, he said based on this verse in the Quran men, are, men and women are equal except in the case of leadership but he's going to he's going to break that down Quran clearly says that the women have rights those similar to them on terms equitable but the men have a degree of advantage now many of the Muslims they misunderstand this ending phrase that the men have a degree of advantage and they think that men are superior you see that he said so many Muslims think that this means that men are superior <clears throat> nothing could be further from the truth keep listening and they quote the verse of the Quran, and then they and that they the quote. men are superior to the women. So Allah has said, the men have degree of advantage, the men are superior. What they're quoting is the verse of the Quran, which was recited by a wonderful Qari from Surah Nisa, chapter number four, verse number thirty-four, which says, nisa, that the men are the kawam of the women. The men are the kawam of the women. Hear this now. What is the meaning of the Arabic word kawam? He says, what is the meaning of the Arabic word kawam? Kawam comes from the root word akama. Comes from the root word ikama. And ikama, well, I guess he's going to say it, but I, well, shut up, Jedi. Which means to stand up for. Stand How up we for. have akama before salah? We stand up for salah. There is the call to prayer, which is known as the adan. But after the adan is called, or before the Adan is called you have or after the Adan is called then you have somebody that will make the Ikama which is an e uh, which is an abbreviated version of the call to prayer it's known as the Ikama which means to stand up so this Arabic word Kawam means the men have one degree of additional responsibility and one degree additional service towards the one degree of additional service to the queen do you understand and again Allah shows us this in nature everybody there's a there was a YouTube video I saw years ago um, it was somewhere in somewhere like probably London or something some little tiny car with the steering wheel on the wrong side and I was over it but there was a legion of bees on this car because their queen was trapped <laughs> Allah who had and they wasn't going nowhere till they got that queen. Do you understand me? They will sting your ass off. They will swarm you. Whatever they got to do. They ain't going nowhere till they get that queen. Arabic word kawam means the men have one degree of additional responsibility and one degree additional service towards the woman. Amen. So I'm saying her throne is never compromised. Do you understand? It's never compromised. Not one degree of superiority to boss over the woman. Not one degree of superiority to boss over her. You're not the boss of the women, brothers. That's what I need my brothers to take away from this. You are not. If you haven't inferred it already for yourself, you're not the boss of women. I'll say it again. We are not the boss of women you understand we are their servants 
their providers and their protectors. They are women. You need to really understand who they are and act accordingly. You see? Because as soon as you go into some big, you know, big to do for a multi billion dollar corporation, you're going to meet with the, you know, the head CEO and all that. You make sure you got on your best suit and. I had to go get my shoes shined. You ain't even been to a shoe shine before. But there your bitch ass is. You see what I'm saying? You get your special haircut. You're doing it all. Your best cologne and everything. Hope it was Blue Jeans Versace. But that's something else. That'll be in the book like last chapter. But you doing your best. Because you're about to meet the CEO. You see people going, Wendy. She go, oh, you look so nice. I, I, I bought this just for you, Wendy. I bought this just for you. You see, you're uh, you're assigning a certain majesty to the person based on your perceived or understood and acceptance of their position. Are you with me? Now, you need to have 20,000 times that reverence for the women I say again we're here as their servants their protectors and their providers and when they want our loving they let us know and you put in that work see what I'm saying and all this is this is not in Quran or Hadith this next thing, this next thing I'm about to say and don't be looking for yours you're only seeking for her to get hers. You gonna get yours, but that ain't the focus. It's her. You wanna be a king? <laughs> you follow what I'm telling you, I'm on me. You will be un nobody could follow you, nobody could see you. You see what I'm saying? Nobody could see you. Quick story, I gotta say this because back when in my dating I would have brothers even some of my cousins after I was no longer with a sister and they may have tried to holler and they come man what you be doing can't nobody holler at no females after you've been with them what, what you I mean what you be doing because I mean, you're not me you're not me <laughs> and I am not an act that can be followed so find something else amongst the fray you see but that's part of the secret i could sell this in a book but i'm just gonna, I'm just going to let y'all have this you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna get, if y'all want to send me like a little check or something i won't mind but i'm just gonna, i'm just gonna go and give this for free you know what I'm saying? just like a little charity piece just like the little charity piece and stuff just so you know i'm saying just doing my little charity piece you know what i'm saying but it's about that woman at all times, around the clock, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. It just is, man. Oh. Even women that I've just been friends with, I have a special relationship with because of that very thing. It's just in me to be in a role of servant to that woman period let her flourish let her bloom in service towards the woman not one degree of superiority to boss over the woman and if you read the tafsir of Tabari he said that Arabic word kawam means one degree of additional responsibility because if you read the verse ahead, the verse says that Allah has given men more strength than the woman. You see why translation is so important, everybody? And why you can't trust that Bible? Because you don't have the original language. And I've already told you, with, a lot of, with all of these languages, 
as it relates to this uh, uh, um, languages of revelation, the, the, the Torah, the Bible, the Quran, all that stuff. If you change one thing, you've changed the entire meaning of everything. The whole context is now gone. You don't have it. I mention that because you see how he went even further and broke down the uh, the tafsir, which is the tafsir is, is sort of the, the, the dissertation. That's what I'm is tafsir. Because I've even told you there's some Qur'ans that you can have. You can just buy books that are just the tafsir of Qur'an. Or you can get ones just tafsir of a certain surah or a certain verse. Uh, you know, or it gets you so... And some Qur'ans have tafsir in the actual book itself. You know, it'll have the English translation plus the tafsir. So he went even further and gave you tafsir on the word. You see? So because of that advantage, it is a us ahead. The word says that again. It's one degree of additional responsibility. Right. He said the Arabic word Qawam, and if you read the Tafsir of Tabari, he said the Arabic word Qawam means one degree of additional responsibility. Because if you read the verse ahead, the verse says that Allah has given men more strength than the women. So because of that advantage, it is the duty of He said if you read the verse before, Allah says he's given the man more strength than the woman. So because of that advantage, you don't just get stuff for free. So Allah has given you extra strength, so you got even more responsibility. And it's to that queen. You see? She don't gotta do nothing but perch. Just perch. Just perch. Like a wind fan on her if she wanted. it. You see what I'm saying? At what speed she says. And she just perches. Just perch. Just perch. Of the men that they should take care of the woman, they should not boss over her. They should take care of the woman and not boss over her. Furthermore, Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 19, that treat your wives with equity and kindness even if you dislike her. Me treat her with equity and kindness even if you don't like her. You see? And I remind you, this goes even to this is for all females so and like i was telling you about my sister earlier so these same she's not my wife but these same responsibilities she is entitled to from me her brother because she is a woman you see she don't gotta do nothing but perch eat your wives with equity and kindness even if you dislike her I means even if you don't like your wife, yet treat her with love and compassion. And treat her kindly, even if it is like her. Even if it is like her, treat her with kindness and compassion. See? And in Islam, can't stand her ass, but she still got to goddamn it, bow and serve and kneel. We do not consider calling the woman as housewives. House Hear this, I love this. He said in Islam, we don't consider ever to call the woman the housewife. Hear this. Wife. You know, housewife, if you analyze, means... He says housewife, if you, housewife, if you analyze it, it means... She's married to the house. She's married to the house. In Islam, we don't consider our women, they're married to the house to be called housewives. You know, in English, we have, what is their profession? Housewife. If we in Islam prefer calling the woman as homemaker. In Islam, we will use the term homemaker. Why? Because... Because they make the home. They build the home. Because they make the home, they build the home. You see? It's that woman. And I brought you guys another thing from uh, earlier, like a different time in a different video from Khalid Yassin, where he was, he was lecturing the men and saying, you're not the boss of the damn women. You are not. Such ass. And it was in one of the examples he gave. You don't go in there and tell her how to do the drapes and how to do and just how you you know. You don't tell her how to do a thing. You see. And like I say, and as he's breaking down this homemaker, like she's the, the she's the queen, dude. Like it, it's it's done. Like you don't get a say. As homemakers, because they make the home, they build the home. So inshallah, I believe that. The ladies from now onwards, when they have to fill any form, instead of writing the profession, if they are not right. He said, I think for now on, the women, 
you know, instead of filling in housewife, they'll fill in homemaker. Housewife, that's English terminology. They're marrying you to your house. Before mentioning homemaker, because the woman builds the home, they make the home. And in Islam, a woman is not married to a master to be treated like a slave. She's not married to a master to be treated like a slave and then it's going to cut off. She's married to an equal and the role is that of partnership. She's married to an equal and the role is that of partnership. You see? And so, but the woman is, she has her own responsibilities to Allah. So she can show compassion and kindness when she chooses. It's like I told you before, if she wants to to have dinner ready for you when we get home you kneel and cry at her feet and give her so much thank you because she didn't have the shit to do if you suddenly got clean drawers folded and hang you know and she did that for you like oh my god Allahu Akbar she don't have it to do she don't but it's in her heart if she wants to show that compassion you see if she wants to ask you what drapes we want to have you know in the foyer or something you know what then that's compassion from her you see oh man Allah is trying to show you the woman is everything and she is a queen and you are blessed to have her you are blessed to have her you are not the prize ever she is she is that she will even have you and put up with you and even want you you know or even desire to show you affection and love and all those things and devotion and all that that's a blessing brothers you're not entitled to shit write this down I'm not entitled to shit write it write it write it write it and something else I thought I would go into because it's, it's like a 60 second video you know in Islam you know because women have their cycle every month you know and so uh, there's been some misunderstanding people think that Islam looks up upon that as dirty oh the woman's dirty she can't come into the mosque she can't and she can't and so that's just that again everything that Allah does is divine and perfect so I gotta let you hear that just in case any of my women have ever heard that I thought well it'd be worth it to put that little 60 second video uh, with this so let's go to that now now this one's actually called why women aren't allowed to pray when they have their menzies Um, somebody asked a pretty, Hanan asked a pretty interesting question. Why is a woman not allowed to pray while she's in her period because she's unclean? So why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create something that's unclean in a way that can't be changed? Actually, somebody was asking the question, you know, why is a woman allowed to play, pray when she's on her cycle and, and she's unclean? And, and why is it considered unclean? Because, so why does Allah create something that's unclean in a way that can't be changed? It feels like a curse. And then actually it feels like a curse. I'll shut up. Uh, so Hanan, uh, the answer to your question is Allah never called the menstruation of a woman uh, filth or dirty. He actually called it a period of pain. Uh, he he asked he told the believers, They ask you about the time of menstruation. Uh, tell them it is pain. So first of all, men are told to be more accommodating to women. You see, Allah has covered everything, everybody. My God, like, let me just go back a little bit because I feel like I was interrupting too much and just had too much going on. I just, I, we, damn it, we need to go back. The menstruation of a woman, uh, filth or dirty. He actually called it a period of pain. Uh, he he asked, he told the believers, They ask you about the time of menstruation. Uh, tell them it is pain. So first of all, men are told to be more accommodating to women and to be to recognize that they're in a period of difficulty and this is a, a you know something that Allah created to create you know in, in the Allah ya'lamu man khalaq he knows how he creates and he knows very well who he created but to think that this is a curse is certainly not the case and the fact that you can't fast in those days or you can't pray in those days in no way actually takes away from your rank before Allah and Allah himself says that 
you know, بَعْضُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْضٍ The ayah in which good deeds are mentioned, Allah actually put men and women side by side. لَا أُضِيعُ عَمَلَ عَامِلٍ مِنْكُمْ مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَىٰ I don't waste the good deed of anyone among you that does good deeds, whether they be male or female. So that's actually the, the, the decree of Allah Azza wa Jalla on this matter. So that was worth bringing, I think, because again, it also shows once again, Allah is always uh, uh, making accommodation for the woman and never compromising her, her as they say, her status. You see, her status is never compromised. So even when she's on her cycle, Allah says this is a time for pain, of, of pain for the woman. And so the man should be even more accommodating. And this is no slight against her in any way with the divine you know is not no curse and all this other mess like get that out of here but just to do a, a summation quickly Jedi on this I just want to say I'll be bringing um, you know this information will come up again in some degree um, you know in the curriculum going forward um, I've been eclectic with what I've been bringing you. Um, I've just been trying to go by whatever the inspiration is. And, you know, I brought you the Zamzam. I brought you Death and Dying. I brought you the Miracle of the Number 19. I brought you Science of the Crown with the Fly. I brought you, um, I can't remember everything, you know. But this is another piece, you know, because there this way of life is complete and has been laid out complete from the divine you know so um, I would just say to um, particularly my women not just because of this subject but because it's been the women who have been reaching out and saying that they're have either gotten Qurans or getting a Quran or they're trying to read it and all these sort of things and I still don't know why you haven't reached out to me um, like I say that that I, I can't put that together you know I, I don't I, I don't I don't I don't know what that is um, I would say don't be intimidated by me you know I'm very approachable um, uh, you know I, just, I I don't know if that's an issue but um if it is then I would encourage you not to let that be because um, I'm not the divine you know and I've I'm somebody who's never been intimidated by anybody on the earth. Nobody's greater than me, except for the divine. And you should adopt that same understanding for yourself, you know. Um, but again, I do hope that my women have been, their eyes have been opened, their hearts have been touched, and their ears are ringing, you know. Because I know there's even women now that you know uh, that just probably most of their life they just felt like they're I'm more than this you know like I'm more than what society has told me I am as a female as a girl as a woman I I, I, I just I'm more than this but they couldn't they didn't have the tools to put that final piece of the puzzle in so that they could see the tapestry and go oh that's it you know um, so hopefully I've been able to put that puzzle piece into place, you know. Uh, lastly, I'll just say, <clears throat> you know, there's no logical reason to not move towards this way of life because you don't have any reason not to, you know. Anything else, I could absolutely understand trepidation and wait, I don't know, and I'm not sure. There's nothing to be unsure about in Islam. If you're unsure, it's just because you don't want to, you know. Or if you're afraid, it's unfounded because there's nothing to be afraid of. Everything is answered for you and not in some answer that requires you to just, I guess I just have to trust that. No, we have evidence and proof for anything you want to know or ask. We have evidence and proof. Like what else do you need? So that takes away, uh, you know, the floor from under you with this I don't know thing. 
because anything you don't know, you can ask and we have an answer and proof for you. You know, or Allah has the answer and the proof. Like we just, <laughs> you know, we just witnesses here, you know, and beneficiaries, if you will. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> uh, you know, I wouldn't wait. I, and one of the sisters, um, I forget your name, Shining Star or something like that, was saying, you know, she doesn't have the, she hasn't gotten the courage, or I think that was the word. You don't need the courage. You understand? The courage will come. You need to make the move now if that's your only holdback. You understand? Or the discipline, I think she said. The discipline will come. That's part of the reason why you are not Muslim now. That's why you don't have any discipline in your life. Because you are living a life that is not ordained by God. So throw that out. That's one of the things that you will get by living the way that God intended for you to live is you will get the discipline. You see? That's that's part of it so throw that out you know and I remind you that once you make your Shahada everything you've done up to that very second is not gonna face you on Judgment Day so any all the things that you that only you and God know that you've done in your life you ask yourself do you if you die right now do you want do you want to have to answer for that today I think not I think not so it's better if you have a clean slate now it's Allah has said it's as if you are a newborn baby coming out of the womb of your mother you are absolutely sinless and perfect and without fault <sighs> Allahu Akbar many of us that are Muslims you know we wish we could go back and retake our Shahada <laughs> because you want that perfect slate you know or damn near perfect you know but you can't but here you have a new chance a new chance you know and it's beautiful this is dedicated to my women out of my absolute love for you whether Islam existed or not whether I existed or not you know this is out of my love for you my absolute love respect and admiration and recognition of your true identity that Allah has given me the ability and the gift to be able to see since I've been on the earth as I've said to you I've just always felt that energy you know like that's my soul has always said this feels right that's just yeah like I've never been that beat your chest dude and I, see how many females I can just go through and you know I'm the boss and I run this and I don't have that spirit you know I'm humbled in the presence of a woman. I'm humbled like I just turned into a kid, a servant. <laughs> like what you need me to do, you know? <laughs> just whatever her happiness is, that's that always just came easy for me cuz and I think that that's because and why I know it's pure is because as I said I, I came up very sheltered and I didn't have outside influences, you know? I am who I am because what uh, has come out of me over time, you know, and my own constitution and force field being so strong. Like, I don't, I'm not a mimic of nobody. I'm just a unique article. Like, and everything that I do is genuine and from my being. I'm not contrived. I'm not rehearsed. Everything is pure from me. And it's always been that way, you know. And so why should this be any different, you know? I know that my feelings are are right because they are pure because they are pure and they have been consistent you know so to my women it's time for you to recognize your inheritance recognize your identity most of all recognize your majesty your majesty not because I say so but because, but because the one that made you says so and I've shown that I believe in this video to my women with Qur'ans or interested in Islam or more expounding upon or you have more questions or whatever anything you need from me I am available and I will move heaven and earth to be available for you anytime that is good for you 
don't give a damn what time zone you live in. You can live in Antarctica. Whatever's convenient for you is what I will bow to. That is my pledge from my mouth to Allah's all-knowing ears. I make that pledge to you. I'll see you soon.